Get ready, it's time. Motherhood Talk Radio, starring Sandra Beck, is the most powerful voice in women's issues today. As the owner of Motherhood Incorporated, Sandra brings you inspiring, influential, and interesting resources to help you navigate everything from child care to corporate formation. Each episode of Motherhood Talk Radio features guests who all have a story, experts in their field, and information you won't want to miss. We bring you everything from the latest crafting tips to how to be sexy in your 40s. From great parenting tips to moms facing some tough challenges and most importantly how to bounce back with style. Motherhood Talk Radio helps you make a difference in your world and the world around us. Being all you can be starts right here, right now. Let's do it. Here's your host, Sandra Beck. Hey ladies, this is Sandra Beck and I've got a special series coming up. We're going to do a Fruits of the Spirit series and we're going to be uh, with Lisa Dietrich and she has got an amazing background and she's been one of the women in my life who has been really my Bible expert. She's been my good friend. She was there walking through me uh, the five years that my mother was sick and passed away from cancer. So she has been a really important part of my life. And Whenever I have a Bible question, whenever I have a, a mommy question, you know, she's raised four kids and, you know, she's got a you know bunch of new grandbabies. Whenever I have a question, I go to her. So she's somebody that I really, truly trust uh, in guiding me through understanding uh, some of the things in the Bible. And one of the things that I'm a big fan of is the fruits of the Spirit. And I think it's really important that we as women really embrace uh, this concept. I think it's a really, really good guideline uh, for any mother, any woman, really any person. And um, without further ado, I'm going to bring on Lisa Dietrich. And Lisa, tell me a little bit about yourself so our audience knows who they're listening to. Hi, Sandra. Um, I am Lisa Dietrich, and I am uh, a pastor's wife. My husband is a pastor here. We live in uh, Madras, Oregon. He's a pastor of a church in Culver, which is about 10 miles away. Um, uh, he's been a pastor since officially since 2007, but really he was a pa- I knew he was going to be a pastor when I started dating him. I just didn't really think about through what it would be like to be a pastor's wife. So this is an interesting role I have. <laughs> um, we also, like I said, have four kids that are all grown. Uh, the youngest one still lives here with us cause she's got it really good now without the other ones around. <laughs> and, um, I am, um, I work part-time at the local community college, um, and that kind of frees me up to do some of the ministry with my husband and do things like going on missions trips, like I just got back from Africa, Uganda, and that was just an amazing, amazing experience. And you got a new name, which happens to be one of our Fruits of the Spirit when you were over there. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? I did. It was very cool. Well, what we didn't really know when we arrived there was that the uh, our hosts were kind of watching us to see how we interacted with each other, how we behaved, how we, you know, just what we did, what we were like. And as a result of that, they gave me the name Marimbe, which means peace. And I kind of laughed at it first and said, you don't know me very well if you're giving me the name peace. But then they explained it. <laughs> That, um, you know, they watched the way I um, interacted with my team, and I was kind of like the unofficial mom, even though there were some people on the team my age and older. But, um, you know, just the way I kind of looked over the team and and kind of made sure everybody was getting along and and tried to keep the peace among the team. Because when you're traveling with a group of 10 people, um, you know, things happen and personalities conflict and, um, you know, it wasn't horrible. It was very good, actually. I think we did very well. But I just w- wanted to make sure that everybody was doing all right and um, and that the, that we were all getting along because we were on a mission from God, quite honestly. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it's always good to get along on a mission from God. But I think, you know, that that leads us right into, you know, the fruits of the spirit, because, you know, the the uh, fruits of the spirit is a biblical term that kind of sums up the nine attributes of a Christian life, according to Paul in his letter to the Galatians. And the actual statement is, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I bet that self-control part was a big big part of keeping peace uh, on your mission trip. 
Uh, yes, it was. And, and honestly, that's one of the ones I feel like I need the most work on. So we'll get to that eventually. <laughs> we will get to that. But for today, we're going to talk about love. And uh, Lisa, you have also, you have a really good blog. I want people to uh, to check it out, especially if you're interested in the Fruits of the Spirit, because you wrote a great series about Are You Fruity uh, in your In a Relationship series. And you can find Lisa's website site at Lisa Dietris. That's L-I-S-A-D-E-T-R-E-S dot com. And you've written on each one of the fruits of the spirit. That is correct. And um, most people like fruit of some sort or another. It's it's juicy. It's sweet. It, it makes your mouth water. And that's that's how we should be as Christians. We should be, um, you know, something that people want to be around and, and you know, uh, produces a type of hunger and thirst for the things of God. So um, that's part of the reason why I wrote that series. <laughs> well, and I loved it. I mean, it's, you know, it's very popular, very popular series. And uh, the first one, you know, you're welcome. Um, the first one is, is love. And, you know, we're going to talk about love today because love takes many forms and also love appears. I don't know how many times the word love appears in the Bible. We can Google that on the break, but love is kind of a big cornerstone of, of, Christian life. But how does the Bible define love? You know, what you've you've read the Bible how many times cover to cover? I don't even know. Many yeah. times. <laughs> right there. I can't even get there at once, which is why you're my Bible expert and why I go to you for these things. But in a nutshell, like how does God define love? Well, uh one of the best definitions that I found is in the book of first John and it says God is love. And, you know, it all kind of flows from there. Um, when we look at how much God loved us, um, you know, to create this beautiful world we live in. And I got to tell you, I love to travel because I love to see God's wonderful creation. Um, he loved us enough. He made us even though we knew, he knew we were going to fall. He knew we were going to mess it all up. Um, but he loved us enough to make us anyway so that we could have this great relationship with him. And then when we did mess it up, he loved us enough to send his son to die for us, which is huge. Um, and, you know, he, he wants us to be in relationship with him. He loves us. He is love. And he teaches us what real love is. There's a lot of different kinds of love out there. Um, but when we talk about God's um, agape love, that's a Greek word that just means unconditional um, that kind of gives a whole new spin on how we should be interacting with other people. Well, and one of the things I noticed um, is that people really confuse the word love. Um, you know, we use, you know, it's like like the Alaska word for snow. There's like a, a couple hundred different words for the different types of snow. In our culture, you know, the word love is so all-encompassing, but it can call, you know, it can be everything from I love these new pair of shoes to I love my newborn baby to I love God, you know, all really different um, feelings even. Not, you know, not just intensity, but, but different feelings. And, you know, love is amazing in that, it always expands. And I just want to talk for a little bit about when you open your heart and you try love, you know, you try to be loving, even in the face of people who aren't loving, the rewards are immense. Yes, very true. And love is, and we did a series, we did a um, uh, show on this a couple of years ago, but love is a choice we make. It, it is a verb. And like you said, when we choose to love people who maybe aren't very loving or hard to difficult to love, um, it does expand us. It expands our perspective. And it, I think what it does sometimes is it opens up our eyes a little bit more to maybe what those people are going through. Because if you really get to know some of these people that are just contentious and, and prickly, we start finding out that First of all, they really need love in their lives, but that they may have some issues they're dealing with, and they may need some help with that. And sometimes love can open the door to bringing healing into other people's lives. Well, and I think it, you know, from a selfish standpoint, whenever I've extended love to someone who has been prickly or cranky or or dismissive, it's amazing how that little bit of love can turn things around. 
Exactly. Exactly. And that's why God tells us to, you know, I mean, there's only two commandments really in the Bible. One is to love God and the other is to love everyone else. And if we were to take that seriously, um, this world would be a very different place. It would. It would because, and it starts at the young level. You know, what I noticed, Lisa, and I know we've got about two minutes uh, to break, um, was that, you know, you had four children. I had two children. They come into the world full of love. You know, and I know there's probably some anomaly out there that didn't, but realistically, we have to teach our children not to love. We have to teach them to discriminate. We have to teach them to separate from their from their brothers and sisters, um, not in a loving way. We have to teach them that. Did you find that with your children, that they just came in with love? Well, my first one was colicky, so I'm not sure I would call it love. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, well, they are, you know, incredibly selfish because they can't take care of themselves. But what we pour on our children is love. And you're right, we, you know, a lot of their bad habits and their attitudes and and beliefs come from us and we we have to be very careful about what we're teaching our children by word or by deed absolutely i'm going to take us to commercial break uh this is sandra beck of motherhood talk radio we're visiting today with lisa dietrich and if you want to read about her writings on fruit of the spirit you can go to lisa dietrich that's lisa l-i-s-a dietrich d-e-t-r-e-s dot com this is part of a series that each week we're going to cover one of the fruits of the spirit we're going to cover it in depth you can find uh information about the fruits of the spirit just by opening up the bible it's an amazing thing, Lisa, when you look it up and you read, uh, you know, what Paul has to say just about love. Yes. Yeah. So, all right. So uh, we're going to go to commercial break. When we come back, we're going to continue our exploration on love. This is Sandra Beck from Motherhood Talk Radio. And if you like this episode, check us out on iTunes. You can also find us at toginetradio.com. And we'll be back again after the break. Stay with us. There's lots more great conversation to come on Motherhood Talk Radio with Sandra Beck right after these messages. It's the Fitness Minute with fitness expert Annette Hammond. Working your lower body with weights and targeting your hamstring, quads, and glutes pays great dividends. Not only are you strengthening those muscles, you are sculpting them, making them firmer and more defined. One of my favorite lower body exercises is wall squats with the ball. Place the stability ball, those are the big exercise balls, between your low back and the wall. Lean against the ball so that your feet are planted about 12 inches in front of you. Slowly lower your body so that your thighs are parallel to the floor. Do not go lower than 90 degrees at the knees. Straighten the legs and squeeze your glutes as you come up. Repeat for three sets of 15 reps. Remember to keep the weight on your heels and don't let your knees extend over the plane of your toes. Go at your own pace and make those muscles strong and shapely. For the Fitness Minute, I'm Annette Hammond. Have you heard? The pages of American Patchwork and Quilting magazine come to life on our new weekly online radio show, American Patchwork and Quilting. Join Pat Sloan, our blogging and quilt designer host, as she talks about the latest trends, ideas, and inspirations. Her guests include quilt pattern designers, authors, quilt shop owners, and our editors. All quilters, just like you. Call in with your questions. Get quilting tips from industry experts. Learn about free patterns. Hear behind-the-scenes stories from our magazines, American Patchwork and Quilting, Quilt Sampler, and Quilts and More. Get the scoop on free stuff and find out more about the best independent quilt shops in North America. To listen to a live show, tune in Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Just log on to allpeoplequilt.com slash radio. To hear past shows, go to iTunes and search for American Patchwork and Quilting Radio. We hope you'll join us because we know that quilting changes everything. Welcome back to Motherhood Talk Radio with Sandra Beck, bringing you interesting, influential, and inspiring guests every week, helping you make a difference in your world and the world around us. Let's get back to the show. Here's Sandra Beck. 
Hey ladies, this is Sandra Beck and this is our Fruits of the Spirit series and we are talking today about love, the many different kinds of love. We learned in the first uh, segment here that God is love and he expects us to love each other. Lisa, that's really easy when we like each other. <laughs> you know, I love you, you love me. You know, we've been friends a long time. We've been through a lot together. You've helped me immensely uh, in my life, not only with raising my boys to be godly men, as you put it, and to uh, look out uh, as I go through my dating years as, you know, midlife, you know, divorced uh, woman to look for a godly man. You know, those those words resonate with me when I meet people. They resonate with me when I raise my kids. And, you know, the love you've shown me as a friend is is just it's so beautiful and it's it's so wonderful but what happens when we're not feeling the love when we're not around people that reflect our goodness <laughs> so that's a hard one to and they seem to be everywhere <laughs> well that's when it gets difficult and that's that's the time when we need to you know throw out a quick prayer hey lord um you've told me to love everybody and this one's making it difficult um, help me with this. Help me to love this person. And um, it, it, like I said before, this is a choice that we make. And sometimes it's a very difficult choice because there are people that just um, we don't want to love, you know. And the interesting thing, um, I think, is uh, um, in First John chapter 4, it really talks about love and depth. And that's where it says that God is love. But interestingly enough, it casts the the antithesis of love, the opposite of love. And most people would think that the opposite of love is hate. Exactly. Most people think of that. But in first John, uh, Paul says, or excuse me, John, uh, the apostle John says that the opposite of love is fear. And that casts a whole new light on why maybe we don't want to love some people. Maybe we're afraid of them. Maybe we just don't know. And, you know, most people are afraid of the unknown. But, you know, perfect, and it says a perfect love casts out or throws out all fear. And just consider, you know, the choice we make. If we choose to go through life loving the way God wants us to love with the fruit of that spirit of love within us, um, all of a sudden we're living a fearless life. And, wow, that I'm, I'm an adventurous person. That just sounds great to me. Well, I think, Lisa, you're right on there because, you know, I think of some of the people in my life that I I will say I'm not real fond of, you know, ex-husbands kind of go to the top of that list. Um, But what does it look like to love them? Like, you know, I found that I can love them in my heart. I can make peace with them. I can make peace with the people who've made me angry or have hurt me. But it doesn't mean I need to reach out and engage with them on a daily basis. So let's talk about what it means to love someone who has has been hurtful or difficult or, um, you know, some people have caused really great trauma in other people's lives. So what does that really look like to say you love someone? Well, and that's a really good question, Sandra, because I would never advocate anybody staying with an abuser or, you know, continually going back and getting beaten up repeatedly, uh, calling that love. Um, Because there's a definite way that we can love a person, pray for them. And, and mostly it's, it's something that comes out of the heart that we, we are truly concerned for their well being, but we understand that God is going to need to work in them through somebody else because he never tells us to, well, I guess he does say, you know, to love your enemies, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to just stay in there and continually uh, be a punching bag for them. So um, we can love them from afar. We can forgive them. That's a huge thing, you know, offer a forgiveness and go your separate ways. We, we don't have to be, you know, continually in their um, sights. Um, now, no. our people, maybe coworkers that are just difficult to be around. And again, we just need to love them and, um, you know, make make the best of a bad situation. 
Right, because God never intended us to get beat up in love. He didn't intend us to, you know, be put in a position of repeated, like, you know, if it's a coworker, insults or whatever. We're not talking about putting yourself in that position. We're talking about what you feel in your heart and what you uh, what you take into your body. It's really a very, you know, this part of love, Lisa, is really part of a very private thing. It's It's what you yes. hold in your heart. And, you know, I'm, I try to be as much as I can, you know, I'm human, so I make mistakes, but I try to be respectful, you know, when my ex-husband is in public, you know, if there's some of the women in my life who have hurt me, you know, I'm not going to actively go out and hurt them back. I'm not going to send them evil wishes. I'm not going to do all that. What I am going to do is pray for them and pray for myself Um, But I don't want to carry that in their heart. And that's what I think God is talking about. I don't think he means us to go up and give our enemies a hug and, you know, get in their lives and make everything all better. You know, Jesus saves, not me. Um, But in my heart, what is it I carry towards that person? And that's where I really interpret the love one another. I can love someone from afar. I can love someone but stay out of the range of their hatred or their anger. I can still have those loving feelings towards them. I can pray for them. I can hope for the best for them. But I'm not going to carry that anger or hatred or any of those negative emotions in my heart. That's kind of how I look at, you know, love one another. Exactly. And um, I think the key there is praying for them. Um, I've seen some amazing turnarounds in relationships just by praying for people. And and the, the, the interesting thing is that um, definitely God hears our prayers and he can change that other person. But what prayer does um, it, it changes the way we look at them. And, um, you know, and, and it, again, it broadens our perspective that maybe that person is surly and contemptuous because they've been wounded. They're, they're broken. They're, they're hurting themselves. And they, this is the only way they know of, of interacting with the world and their, through their brokenness. So when we see that, then all of a sudden, you know, love and compassion are very easy to pour on these people. And it may never turn them around. They may still be mean and contemptuous to us. And again, we don't have to stand there and take it. We can uh, distance ourselves. And I think, you know, um, Jesus gave us a good example of that. When he was walking on the earth, he didn't go hang out with the guys that were plotting to kill him, uh, which happened to be the religious leaders. He hung out with the broken people, the people that really needed um, his love and his touch, and these were the prostitutes and the the you know the castaways of society. Those are the people he hung out with, and he kind of stayed away from those that were you know out to get him. So it's not an unchristian thing to separate yourself, but he still loved those people and he still cared for them, and he actually prayed and cried over them because he knew they were on the wrong path, and we, we don't want that to be the case for people. No, and we don't want it to be the case for ourselves. You know, one of the things that I've learned, and Lisa, you really helped me understand this, is that your relationship with God is your relationship. It's you to him. And there really isn't, yes, we have fellowship in church, and yes, we have friends and everybody, but it's really how you see and feel and communicate with him, and it's how you see and feel your neighbors. It really is a very internal experience. And so we know, you know, there's a lot of women, I'm sure, listening out there that have experienced, you know, divorce or death or uh, domestic violence, since it's what three out of four of us will experience in our lifetime, or some sort of violence. And what we choose to carry in our hearts, and this is where the fear part comes in, you know, you know, when I think about there's no fear in love, when you're afraid of the person you love, it's hard for me to identify that that's love. You know, when you're afraid of the person that you're in a relationship with, um, that's that's a real good indication that this might not be love. And, you know, Lisa, what do you think about that? Well, I totally agree. And again, like, we, like we've said, there's a lot of different kinds of love. And um, the love we're talking about here is a choice to love, not the choice to stay and be hurt. Um, and sometimes the fear involved in all this is a fear of being alone or the fear of not having somebody in your life. And um, that, that may be the worst prison of all is not being content in who you are 
not um, understanding that God is always with you. You're not alone. You're never alone. Um, but it is difficult to, you know, forge ahead and, and make that make a life as a single person. But what you need to do instead of seeing the whole picture, you know, don't, don't look at yourself at 80 sitting there as a spinster knitting away. Look at yourself tomorrow. Uh, free of that abuser, free of that fear and, and anger in your life. Um, you know, look at tomorrow, look at the next day. Don't, don't, you know, don't try to plot out your whole life. Just make that active choice to free yourself of that bad relationship and move forward. God will take it from there. Well, and you and I have both, Lisa, have done it, not to get into our personal stories, but we have both had relationships in our past that have not been, you know, the best, that have been very, very difficult and abusive. And so when we talk to you, who is ever listening today, who's hurting, who's alone, who feels that they can't leave, it's kind of an illusion because once you leave, and and to be fair, when I first ended that relationship and ended my marriage as a result, um, I felt really alone, Lisa. I felt so afraid. And I I didn't know where to turn. And I didn't want to turn to another man. I didn't want to turn to drugs or alcohol. In a lot of respects, I turned to you, Lisa, and you helped me turn to faith. So, you know, when people talk about their testimony, that was a big testimony for me. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of this support structure that we can, we can put in place when we are married or we are in a relationship with someone that we are supposed to love or we feel that we love and it's not good. What is there out there? Because a lot of it is available to us. We just have to give it a chance. That is absolutely right. So we are going to wrap this segment up. Um, We're going to come back after the break. For those of you that are out there and you are in a relationship and you are lonely and you are hurting and you are afraid, Lisa and I are here to tell you you are not alone. You can turn to our broadcast. You can turn to God. You can give your troubles away to him. And you can put love back in your heart so you can wake up every day feeling good. This is Sandra Beck of Motherhood Talk Radio. Um, Check us out on iTunes. Check us out on toginet.com. We'll be back after the break with more uh, information about this. And for those of you who want to know where in the Bible, because it can be really overwhelming, uh, some of these passages are, you can look uh, for John 4.16. That's a good one. You can go into... (laughs) That's the first John, not the Gospel of John. Oh, good. First John. John 1. First John chapter 4. Okay, we'll be back after the break. Stay with us. There's lots more great conversation to come on Motherhood Talk Radio with Sandra Beck right after these messages. It's March. 1960, a youth in suburban Chicago lost a front tooth. A new tooth was constructed and attached to his jaw with a brass wire. Soon after, he claimed he could hear music coming from his teeth. That would be annoying even if you were a melomaniac or music lover. Over the years, numerous people have reported being able to hear the radio through their fillings or braces. The most famous being television comedian Lucille Ball. That's enough to give anyone her repellations or goosebumps. But is this really possible or just a hoax? In the days of AM radio, old receivers used to use a crystal or an antenna. A crystal set had a ceramic insulator covered by a piece of metal, very much like a tooth with a filling. Most dentists remain skeptical, though. What's another word for a skeptic? A pyrrhonist. It's marching now. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words-you-never-heard vocabulary with my new app, Too Funny for Words. Girlfriended is on Toginet, Thursdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, with your hosts, Patty Wyatt and Lisa Jernigan. This show is your chance to share, learn, laugh, and connect with other women. The girlfriended principle was born out of loss. Lisa had recently had her mother pass away from cancer, and my mom um, was murdered. A man just walking into a room and started a 23-second shooting spree. I think one of the things we both realized going through those tragedies is that you can be extremely okay and be extremely sad. Check out girlfriended.com. 
and then be a part of Girlfriend It, the radio show, Thursdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. You know, your boyfriend or, or your husband or whatever, they don't totally understand that emotional side to a woman like another woman does. And I think that's so important just to have mm-hmm. somebody that you go, she gets me. Check out the website, girlfriendit.com. Don't miss Girlfriend It with Patty Wyatt and Lisa Jernigan, Thursdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central on toginet.com. Welcome back to Motherhood Talk Radio with Sandra Beck, bringing you interesting, influential, and inspiring guests every week, helping you make a difference in your world and the world around us. Let's get back to the show. Here's Sandra Beck. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here today with Lisa Dietrich, and this is Motherhood Talk Radio, and we are talking about the fruits of the Spirit and how to apply them to our lives. And we're talking about love today because love is a really funny, interesting, challenging, confusing thing because when we're in love and we love something, it's easy. But when we're in situations where love hurts or love destroys or we find it hard to love or we lose our love and um, it can be really difficult. And, you know, People are human, and they let us down despite their best efforts. But there's one person who doesn't let us down, who is always there for us. And Lisa, who is that? That would be God. God never lets us down. He never lets us down. And I want to talk a little bit, you know, in, earlier in the show, we talked a little bit about women who are in relationships, hurtful relationships. And something happens when you're in a very hurtful relationship. I know it happened to me. Um, the love in your heart just gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it feels like, like ashes, like a little pile of ashes. And, you know, I've never been so lonely in my life. Lisa was in the middle of a bad marriage and, you know, there was nothing I could do to ease that pain that I knew how to do. And I couldn't go out and get any needs met, you know, for comfort or intimacy or kindness And it was a really tough place to be in. And at that point, I thought God had forgotten me. Well, and that's that's a pretty common thought to go through your mind when you're in what I call survival mode. Um, And that's very common in abusive relationships. I'm not a psychologist. I can't go through all the steps. But what I do know is um, the abuser will most likely separate you from your support system. Um, will remove your, you know, friends and family to where you are alone. Um, and, and that just makes it, I guess that makes it easier for them. I, I don't understand the evil behind that. But, um, and, and that's where it is very difficult when you're in that situation um, and you realize, wait a minute, you know, I'm, I'm all alone here. What do I do now? Um, you know, my friends are distant or gone. My family is you know, afraid to talk to me because I've, you know, distanced myself from them and, um, or, you know, I've been distanced from them. Uh, quite often it's the abuser that makes sure that, you know, there's no support system for you. Um, first things first, God is still there. Um, it's kind of cool. The, the apostle Paul, when he, uh, went and visited Athens, Greece, um, went to a, a series of shrines and to the Athenian gods, and one of them was to an unknown god. And he presented, you know, he said, "I know who this god is. Let me let me introduce him to you." And he said, "He is not far from any of us. You know, even when we feel like we're all alone, God is right there, um, and He's just waiting for you to to reach out." Um, and there are times when He, you know, will reach in and, and um, manip- change things in your lives. But a lot of times he's just waiting for you to reach out to him. He's there. He's never far away. Well, that was the funniest thing to me, Lisa. Like, you know, I guess it's not funny, but it, you know, like, I didn't need like a movie pass. I didn't need a subscription. I didn't need anything 
I just needed to ask. And that was, to me, you know, one of the most amazing turnarounds in my life. I remember getting to the point where I just, I was so, Lisa, there was nothing left. Like, there was nothing left in me. And I didn't know what else to do. So I just, and it's funny, you know, because I was raised Christian. It's not like I wasn't. Uh, I, like I wasn't exposed to all the doctrine, to the Bible, to passages and things like that. But I didn't know how to apply it because, I don't know, maybe the egghead in me thought it was more complicated or I maybe never had the need before. I really don't know why I didn't until that point. But at that point, when I was just at my most kind of lost and broken inside, it was so simple. I just said, you know what, God, I've had enough. I've had enough. I can't do it anymore. I can't do this anymore. I need you to step in. I need you to help me. I need you to to tell me what to do, to lead me in the right direction, you know, help me with these boys. I really don't know what to do at this point. And it was just as amazing as, you know, these TV shows are. It was like, you know, I got up the next morning and I felt like, you know, you know, like that ding, 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 ding like with the harp and I could do it. <laughs> And I don't know how, I don't have words for it, but I, once I fully and totally surrendered and gave everything over to God, I got up in the morning and I could take a step. I won't say that I ran a marathon, but I took a step. And then the next day I took another step and then I started believing in myself. And then I started believing in my company and I started believing that I could parent these kids on my own. It was a little step at a time, right? but it took me to ask. And that's all it took. I mean, it took everything, but that's all it took. Well, and, and that's kind of the key there. We A lot of times we'll kind of like, oh, you know, God, are, are you out there? I don't know. But, you know, uh, when you get to that point in your life, and I don't think God always, you know, waits for us to hit bottom, but sometimes for some of us that's what it takes for us to really give him our all, submit to him, and, and just ask him in our humility, help, I can't do this on my own. Um and then he's there. Like I said, he's not far from any of us. And it's interesting. There are several passages in the Bible. Um, the first one is Joel 2.32. It says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And, you know, what you did, what people do every day, calling on the name of the Lord is a serious thing. It's not just, hey, are you there? No, it's, it's from the depths of your soul. I need you. I need your help. I cannot do this alone. And it doesn't mean you're weak. It just means that he's stronger than any of us. And he's willing to share his strength and, and live within us and, and be our strength. Um, and that's what it takes, though. Well, and it does. And it, and it makes a difference. And, you know, for those of you listening, you know, surrendering doesn't mean like giving up all your possessions and, you know, going to live in a convent or, or, you know, giving, you know, like everything away. Like I really didn't understand the word surrender, you know, like as women, we talk so much about empowerment, empower each other. And, you know, surrendering doesn't mean giving up your power. It means, acknowledging what you need so you can be more powerful. It's a very, very different concept because, you know, surrender thinks wave the right flag. And yeah, I did wave the right flag and I did give up, but I didn't give up on myself. And I, what I gave up was what I couldn't control, what I couldn't do, where I needed God to, to work in my life so that I could do my best. You know, it's, it's a partnership. And like, you know, Lisa, you talk about your, your website, you know, in a relationship, it's a relationship. It's not a magic genie granting wishes. It's, it's, it's hard to describe. I mean, you may, might be better at, at explaining this than I am. Well, many, most people see, you know, faith or um, a relationship with God as something that you do on Sunday morning and then the rest of the week you're on your own. And that's religion. That's churchianity. That, that's not what God wants. Um, when we talk about a relationship, uh, think about your best friend or your spouse. If you never talk to that person, if you never even spend time with them, what kind of relationship is that? It, it's not a relationship at all. Um, on the other hand, you know, God wants us in relationship with him 
constantly, daily, you know, and it's not something that we're crawling around on our knees all day, but that we're, he's on the top of our mind. We're thinking about him. We're, we're talking to him and, and that is prayer. And it doesn't have to be with eyes closed and head bowed because I do a lot of my praying while I'm driving and that wouldn't be a good thing. So, um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, you know, it's a relationship, Um, just like a relationship with anybody else. The more time you spend with that person, the deeper the relationship grows. And it's the same with God. Um, We can't just step into it and know him all of a sudden. God is infinite. and, And there are things about God that I don't think we'll ever know. That's okay. Um, I, I really don't have a need for a God who I can put into a little box and there he is because that basically just made my God smaller than I am. And I need a God way bigger than me because I've got problems that are beyond me. And I think we all do. Well, and Lisa, I want to talk about, you know, I'm a big one to say what it looks like, tastes like, smells like, because I kind of get tripped up with sometimes, you know, with the different churches that I've been to and the different speakers I've listened to, because they use words that are really hard for me to understand. And, you know, I remember when I was in your church, oh, many years ago, and uh, your husband, Pastor Al, was up there and, you know, the Hot Bod God Squad was playing. They had the cutest guys in their in their band. Um, the worship. It was worth it going just for that. I know it's not very churchy, but boy, they were so darn cute. Um, But he said, you know, music is a form of prayer. And I never thought of it that way. And then you told me one time when I was struggling, you know, you're like, we were talking about like living in gratitude and praying. And you said, you know, Sandra, praying doesn't have to be this big formal thing. It doesn't have to be in a church. It doesn't have to be, you know, you could be walking, you could be driving, you could be sitting in the bathtub. And you had me start out. I don't know if you ever remember this conversation. You had me start out with just thank God for this beautiful day. Thank God for this food. Thank God for, you know, what you're enjoying, you know, and and it's funny because I used to get a pair of shoes or a, a handbag or, you know, some office supplies, because those are my three major things I love to buy. And I would be like, Oh, my gosh, I so love this pencil. Oh, I love this pencil. And now it switches to Oh, my gosh, God, I love this pencil. Thank you for making it possible for me. And I know that sounds really silly for those of you who haven't tried this. But when you start looking around for the things you're thankful for or grateful for the things that are meaningful to you, you start to change your state from one of fear and discomfort and despair to these little it's like a little flame rising up from the ashes and then another little flame and another little flame. And it starts to restore your heart and repair your heart. And if you're in a difficult relationship, don't run out to some guy, don't run out to your girlfriends, give it a whack, try this, try this in the mornings, try it in the afternoon, in the evening, just do little things that you're grateful for to start opening your heart up so that you are empowered, you can let God come into your heart and work some of these miracles so that you can get yourself safe, your children safe, you can do the things that you were meant to do on this earth because we really weren't meant to sit in fear of the person we're in the relationship. So my my advice, and I'm going to wrap it up real quick because we've got to go to commercial break, is that your first relationship after a breakup and your first relationship that should sustain you the rest of your life really needs to be with God. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk more about how to turn to God in times of need. Stay with us. There's lots more great conversation to come on Motherhood Talk Radio with Sandra Beck right after these messages. I am beautiful. If you're ready for a big change in your work, your career, your happiness, your life, it's time for the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 central on Toginet.com. Marla believes that with the right mindset, anything is possible. Join us as successful life coach Marla Tabaka inspires you and her clients to explore, discover, and live your dreams by developing what she calls the Million Dollar Mindset. Marla will inspire you to take action on your dreams and reveal secrets to success that will help you realize your own unique power. Tune into the Million Dollar Mindset for heartwarming stories with Marla Tabaka. Learn tips and tricks to building a successful business and unlock the secrets to creating a happier, more balanced life through abundant thinking and attraction power. Hour. For more information on the Million Dollar Mindset, go to our website, MarlaTabaka.com. That's M-A-R-L-A-T-A-B-A-K-A.com. It's the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. It's Virgin 
article in Mental Floss magazine listed some actual town names in the United Kingdom that are sure to bring a chuckle to American tourists. Would you like to live in the village of Upton Snodsbury? It's near North Piddle. How about Pickle Church in lovely South Gloucestershire? Or Barton and the Beans in Curry Mallet? How about a vacation in Mudford Sock? Or Puddle Town, an adorably named spot in Dorset? But my favorite town is found in Buckinghamshire. It's called Lubber Houses. I'd like to send a big thank you to all of the brave men and women of our armed forces serving at home and abroad. We appreciate all the good you do in the world on behalf of America. It's marching day. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words-you-never-heard vocabulary with my new app, Too Funny for Words. Welcome back to Motherhood Talk Radio with Sandra Beck, bringing you interesting, influential, and inspiring guests every week, helping you make a difference in your world and the world around us. Let's get back to the show. Here's Sandra Beck. Hey ladies, this is Sandra Beck and this is Motherhood Talk Radio and this is the first in our series, The Fruits of the Spirit, and we're talking about love and we're talking about God's love and mother's love and, you know, how we love our friends and our family and our our husbands and our wives. Um, And we talked a lot this episode about how easy it is to love when everything's going well, but how is it to love when things are not going well? And I'm specifically talking about when we are in relationships. It can be a husband, a boyfriend, it can be a sister, a mother, or father, anybody who you're in a relationship with where love hurts, where love is painful, where love is full of fear. And Lisa and I have both been in that place at different times in our lives. And so we're here to let you know what worked for us. And in both cases, Lisa, I think turning to faith, turning to God was what turned my life around from really a very, very unhappy and painful and hurtful place. Absolutely. Um, And turning to God in any place is is a good choice. It's always a good choice. But sometimes for some of us, it just takes us, we we have to be at rock bottom or we have to have our back up against the wall and there's nowhere else to turn. Um, And, you know, he's still there. He's still waiting. Um, How would you advise somebody like I know what you told me you know you told me to start with baby steps you told me to start with you know like kind of like that being thankful or the grateful thing and you taught me that like one of the things that I really love that you introduced me to and and Rick as well is you know like faith music you know when I didn't have words and this was where Chris Tomlin or Tomlinson what's his name Chris Tomlin comes in Chris Tomlin. Mm-hmm. yeah so that's a really good guy to look up for you that are listening you know you can find him on YouTube you can find I'm on, you know, any really anywhere these yeah. days. Um, in the beginning, in your re- first relationship, or when you when you start a new relationship with God, or however you want to put it, one of the things that I had a hard time, Lisa, was was the words. Like I didn't know what to say, and I I know it's you're supposed to say, well, you just be yourself and you say things. Um, it's really hard when you're already broken and beat down to to find these things. And so what I found was some of this inspirational music, especially there was one Chris Tomlin song that like, like lift you up on Eagle's wings or something like that. That one stuck with me. And I used to walk in the park and listen to this. I called it my trail of tears. And I would walk in the park in the morning, I put my headphones on and I would listen to this music and think about God. And it, it helped me talk to God. It helped me get some of those feelings identified because one of the things that happens when you're in a bad relationship is you cut yourself off from your feelings. And so it really felt mechanical at first, but then listening to this music and and really, I'll be honest, like I tried to read the Bible, Lisa, and I, the adventure Bible you got for the kids was better because I started understanding things, Mm -hmm. but it was, it was too overwhelming for me. And what really worked, and I'm sharing today only what worked with me, not saying this is the end all be all, was to listen to those songs and you introduced me to those songs in your church and that gave me a a basis that gave me a foundation right and and music is so important i i come from a musical background so i always have 
some kind of soundtrack playing in my head. It doesn't matter where I am. I've got music in there. But I don't think everybody's like that. I don't know. Um, and yes, um, but it, I really believe music is a direct connection to the soul. And what we put in to our souls through music is very important to how our spiritual lives go. Um, I love Christian music. I listen to it all the time. Fortunately, there's some really good can I plug another radio station? Oh, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> My favorite is Air One. It's an online radio station. They also have, uh, you know, regular radio stations throughout the country. And um, that's where, you know, I'll hear a song in there and go, ooh, we need to do this in church. <laughs> so that, that's where a lot of those came from, Sandra. I'd go to back to Al and say, we need to do these songs in church. Here, let's do this. And uh, fortunately, we had a, a team that could actually pull it off so that was wonderful but yes music is a big way another thing i think that when we are you know disconnected from um our own feelings and disconnected um from life around us because of a on a bad relationship we need a support system and god is the first thing first one there um but i also think like you did you finally made it to church and that's where we connected and that's where you were able to find a support system of other people that could help you through this. And, um, it's not just me. I I really believe God brought you there. Um, we were praying for you before you got there because of a mutual friend that had kind of let us know you were having a hard time and, um, you need a support system. And, And there's one there, um, in the body of Christ, we, we are all broken people in one way or another. And we've all been through, difficult times and you know it's it's sad that people see church as um, a place where you can only go when your things are good um they actually the opposite is true um you know if you're the the more broken you are the more you need to be there because that's where you're going to find support and healing and others that can love on you and, and help you you know help get you back up and, and get you moving in a, in a good direction well, yeah, and it's so much better than the parking lot at Jack in the Box. I got to tell you, before I went to <laughs> and met you, Lisa, in church, I used to, and I've told you this story before, I used to, like, I had to get out of my house. And especially the first couple nights my kids were over at their dad's and I was, you know, I wanted these children so bad. And then I felt like I had to give them up and give up my time with them, even though they were sound asleep. It, you know, your brain does crazy things. And I, I, I couldn't be in my house anymore. It was like I was crawling out of my own skin and so I would drive to Jack in the Box big Jack in the Box plug and I would get myself a Diet Coke and I would sit there under the light because it was kind of safe and lit and you know and Nehemiah the manager who's still there um, would say hello to me every night and would say you know would and then one night he came out and he bought me this little I don't know some like chili cheese fries some little thing and he's like I just wanted to do something for you you look so sad and you know Lisa I didn't know where to go because I I wasn't in my, I was in a new neighborhood. I was in a new part of the state. I was so embarrassed and so ashamed at what was happening to me. I didn't feel I could go anywhere. And I, I really didn't know where to turn. And I didn't want to walk into a church cold. You know, that's a really tough uh, feeling. And I, I shared this with Denise, um, who said, oh, no, she's like, you could you not go to Jack in the Box anymore in the middle of the night. She's like, you're going to go and come with me on Sunday night to this worship service. And I, I still remember walking in, Lisa, and I could remember seeing you and seeing all these people. And I thought, oh, no, so many of them are younger than me. I'm the only one. And I think I brought both kids, one or both kids. I can't remember. Um, and you just like you welcomed me and, and it was like an instant friendship. I felt an instant communication. So if you are struggling, you don't know if you're going to walk into a church or somebody invites you and you're going to meet somebody who's going to be, you know, like your new best friend and somebody you'll, you'll cherish for your lifetime. Cause Lisa, that's what happened when I walked in and met you. I know. And, and I still remember that night as well. We We had a good talk and, I shared with you parts of my life that I don't usually open up to people. Um, um, I I call that a divine appointment that God meant for us to meet that day. And and, uh, we did connect immediately. That doesn't always happen, but you know, that was a good thing. (laughs) Right. But it, but it does, you know, it doesn't always happen. You know, 
and you welcomed me into your family and and you welcomed me into your home and um i think for the first time since i had moved here i really felt part of something i really felt you know you knew what it was like to have your mother be sick you knew what it was like to have a bad relationship you just knew so much and you you at times and i want to you know be really clear with people you know you didn't have the right answer every single time it's not like you were some savant coming in in my kitchen but we sat down at a cup of tea and you held my hand and you prayed for my mom with me and you know i will never forget that moment lisa that was you know, that's one of those ones like walking in and meeting you. That's one that's going to stick with me forever because I could just lay down my sorrows to someone who understood and who just prayed with me. The simple act of praying together was so powerful. Yes. And, you know, for those those in our audience that are followers of Jesus, we need to make sure we're open to new people. Make sure that we do welcome them when they come in, not not like smothering them, but let them know, acknowledge them and, and let them know that uh, they're welcome here. And don't be afraid to open up your life in your heart to new people. That doesn't mean you share your whole life story with them because that's a little scary at times. But, um, you know, um, as the body of Christ, sometimes we get a little too closed in in our own little church and our own little group and we kind of ignore people on the fringes and we really need to make sure that we're looking out and and welcoming people and and making sure that maybe there's a need there that we can meet and that um you know that they don't just feel like they've walked into a mausoleum or something i really am quite um adamant about that and i've been to churches where we went in sat down went through the whole worship service and left and not one single person even acknowledged we were there. I mean, I was like pinching myself going, did we go invisible or something? (laughs) Um, We don't want to be a church like that. We want to be a church that welcomes people and without judgment, just come as you are. Yep. And Lisa, we are a radio show that prays for people. So I'm going to ask you to give us just a quick short prayer uh, for the women listening today who are going through struggles and the men too, but mostly women. Father, I just thank you so much for Sandra. I thank you for the ability to talk to so many people and and just let them know that you are there. You're right there waiting for us to reach out to you. Um, I pray for those who are hurting, who are in relationships that that need to um, be moved, that we need to move on from. Um, I just pray that you will listen to our hearts, that you will give us the strength to reach out to you. Um, that your spirit of love will just flow into our lives and so that we can uh, be the people, be the women that you need us to be and that you will just give us the strength and empowerment to stand up and live a life in gratitude to you and um, in service to you and in doing so that we can love those who are difficult to love um, and yet... um, put ourselves at arm's length so that we're not being um, injured and hurt by them. Um, I thank you so much for your son who came out of love to die for us and save us. And I thank you that life in you is, is new. You, you renew us. You bring us new life every single day in Jesus name. I pray. Amen. Amen. So if you're listening today, you don't have to do anything special. You can just try God. I found him delicious. He's wonderful. He can help you stand up where you need to stand up. And um, I just, God bless you. God bless all of us. And thank you, Lisa, for being my guest today. We're going to be back again next week where we talk about joy. This is Sandra Beck from Motherhood Talk Radio. And bless us one and all. Thanks for being with us today on Motherhood Talk Radio, starring Sandra Beck. Motherhood Talk Radio brings you interesting, influential, and inspiring guests to help you be all you can be. Everything from great parenting tips to moms living with cancer, starting a family, or starting a business. Making the most of how you bounce back with style. Join us next week for another great guest you won't want to miss here on Motherhood Talk Radio, live every Tuesday afternoon on toginet.com.